Hi, my name's Peter. I am an engineer by background, uh, but definitely not really a machinist. Fortunately, I've got someone with a lot of experience who's going to be taking me through the process for getting started running my first part on a CNC machine. So I've got, uh, this is a bit of a side project actually that I'm working on. I'm rebuilding a car and this is a design I've got for a coolant tank. Um, so I'm ready to take the plunge and make my first part on a CNC machine. So Richard, thanks for taking me through. I know you've got a lot of experience uh, running CNC machines. So I'm really excited to, to do a bit of learning and hopefully take people along with us. So maybe let's start right at the very beginning. When I first came to this part, you had to obviously choose a machine to put it on. So if I was just getting started and having to buy a machine to make the parts that I'm interested in making, what sort of things should I be looking for? Okay, I mean, it's a very big question. That is what machines ought to buy. Um, what you need to know is roughly what parts do you think you're going to be making on it. You don't need to know the exact parts, but what materials and what's the size of the parts you're going to be doing and potentially some of the features on there. You know, instantly that might take you down the route of do you need a lathe or a milling machine? Yeah. And then you're going to be having a look at, right, what size do I need? So what bed size and what travel sizes do I need? Then you'll be thinking about materials. So what horsepower do I need out the spindle and what RPM do I need out the spindle? There's a lot of things here. Does it even fit where you need to put it is one of the big ones as well. What about fitting through the doors that you need to get into? I've seen far too many machine tools having to be broken down and dismantled outside of a door just to get them into the facility. Well, that's a lot to consider just as some initial points. Obviously one thing, if I'm buying a CNC machine for myself, then top of the list is going to be price. And I know there can be a huge difference in cost between machines that look like they've got similar capabilities. So what are the key drivers of cost? And if I'm spending more, what am I going to get for my money? Okay, I mean, let's not get wrapped up in through spindle coolant versus 50,000 RPM spindles. If I was to probably boil it down to one thing, it'd be rigidity. So the more you spend on a similar machine, you'll probably find it's much more rigid. And what I mean by that, a more rigid base, spindle, table, axes, allowing you to hit the material harder and potentially be more productive. So that's a way up you're gonna to have to do. You know, if you're making these things for money, do you spend that extra money, but think that you can make 20% more in productivity because you're gonna hit that material harder? That's roughly what I'd say you'd be getting when you spend more on a machine tool. Got it. So we're quite fortunate here at the Technology Center Autodesk has in the UK. We've got a bunch of different CNC machines we could have chosen. What was it about this part and its geometry materials that led you to choose this machine for us to make it on? Okay, so yeah, you're right. When you gave me that, there's about seven machine tools down our shop that could have gone on. Um, why did I land at this one? So looking at the part size for a start off, that ruled out a few of our machines that would not have fitted comfortably on the bed, just about on some of them. I didn't want it to be right on the limit for your first ever foray into machining. Um, we then think about the features on it. So again, we talk about those side features. We could have probably done this on a three axis machine and lots of setups rather than multi-axis. I know multi-axis can seem daunting for a lot of people, but with Fusion, it really makes it easy. So I made a decision to put it on a five axis machine tool here. I figured that's going to actually be easier for you to be able to do this in one hit rather than doing lots of different setups and data mix. Fantastic. Well, to get to this finished part, there's a lot of steps we need to go through. And we're going to be taking you along every step of the way to learn how to program and machine this part inside Fusion. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and click to watch the next video.